So basically what we're doing is we're throwing down a bunch of evil candles because aesthetic. Yay! Um, we'll be adding lights to the evil candles in a different program, but for now we're just getting all the acids down. I'm throwing this down because it creates a cool pattern on the ground and for no other reason. So basically, we've got we've got lots of trees on the background layer. And then the background layer has a uniform path here that I'm gonna I'm gonna hit and clip studio paint like this right here. Dance and fade away. But when they're finding their way through across this path, it's pretty obvious. They're gonna be moving through sections of the old map, which are now overtaken by the world tree and being held up. Uh this is for the this is for the little opening run, and it's also being combined with the cathedral that was summoned by Mike's my dear, brave, sweet microplastics actions last time. So, this is the most Final Fantasy XIV ass dungeon I've designed so far. <laughs> it's really just, it's not even a full dungeon, it's just a run up. Because, um, the, the way, the way I kind of like to budget sessions is, uh, immediately throwing everybody into into a combat is a bad idea. Or like the highest stakes situation is a bad idea because not everybody's warmed up. But also just taking time to warm up sucks also uh, because it means nothing happens for a while. So finding a way to do good rising action is important, especially good rising action that does something like convey the stakes or the setting, where for me, the, the big thing is, I, oh God, I'm getting into my session design philosophy. Um, cool. The big thing is about establishing a clean or clear flow throughout the entire session. And in this case, since this is a boss fight or a boss like dungeon, framing it in a way that people normally approach bosses uh, and like capitalizing on the patterns that people already recognize is one of the main ways you make it feel impactful, resonant with them, because it's, 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 it's something that they know and is familiar. So you frame it in a way with the trappings of progressing through a dungeon and then eventually happening on the boss monster at the very end, and everyone knows the song and dance if you do that. Like, they get the idea. Um, where if you open session second one with a boss fight, it's, it's cool and exciting and, like, really... That's, that's like more novel, and people can play it in a bunch of different directions, which is what you want sometimes. This, this, that's fucking awesome too. But in something like this, which is a big finale we've been leading up to, everyone agrees walking in. We know this is ending in a big boss fight. Uh, everyone, everyone knows how this goes, so it's about getting everybody into the right pace and working them through. So the beginning is where you have, a, you have an escape scene. It's one of the reasons that I'm a lot of people, myself included, use fall, uh, an escape segment as falling action. Is, um, because it is a, it, it is an exciting way to literally leave behind all the issues you created. Uh, <laughs> you go, so for this, for us, they're gonna be walking their asses up the world tree, and, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna come up out of this zone into the first floor of the coda, and then they're gonna come out from there, and, um, I, I wanted to show the difference in the world that they went down in through uh, to the world that they're coming back up to. It's going to be very different where, like, by the time they get up to the top of the elevator, and this is the last spoiler, I guess, I'll drop for a session. I'm back. So, so much has happened. Oh, welcome back. So much has happened oh, that um, the world, as people seen it, uh, see it now, has changed. They, they went into the depths of hell, and they came back unscathed, and as promised... The world is now different. When they get back up to the top of the elevator, there's going to be throngs of people pushing against the pushing against like all the people defending the area. Now not hostile, but instead people who want to know what the fuck is going on. Everything has shifted, and it's ultimately up to our heroes, the protagonists, to secure the bag and make sure that the victory can keep almost like. Hope is starting to exist, and um, that's that's the most fun part to me because when you've got something to hope for, you've got everything to lose. <laughs> like if you're full of despair, the stakes are low. I'm so sorry, Jackson. I keep putting your loved ones in danger. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry, I, I went on a I went on a fucking game design rant. <laughs> it was awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm making a world tree to climb up because it'll get people in the right headspace, and I also I also just I like scenes where characters are like running with each other and like communicating at the same time. I don't know why. <laughs> they're, they're fun. Scenes are fun. 
chasings are fun. Cool it also it also lets characters catch up with each other in a way that is expeditious. It it is it 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 establishes scale and scope without slowing the game to a crawl, but also lets characters catch up with each other. Like Michael be like like I have a fun time with Dragon now, and everyone's gonna be like it's it's okay. It's okay, my It's okay. <laughs> Bad, sir. We'll get, we'll get your hand out of that Pringles can. <laughs> so, uh, I, I... The main way I direct people's attention is to piece of game design that I absorbed and then never let go, which is, if you want people to go a direction, you put a light color that way. That's it. Yeah, so, like, baby! Where's, where's the path? It's where the pink shit is. Go that way. <laughs> what I what I really like about uh, when you make maps is when you put uh, the trees in the Nago space, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. You can see shit like, in. Uh, the first level of like, RNA tower where there's just the trees in the Nago space. Cause it's just, like, yeah, that are like clipping in from off camera. Yeah, yeah no, I makes, love that shit. It makes shit like a lot better, more full. Ooh, yeah. So it casts a little bit of a shadow down there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So you can see, like, oh, that one's down there, and it's getting a little the bit Oh my god! The oh elevation. my god! Look at this! Wow, oh, dude, I, I fucking love that. Yeah, no, I love doing this. This is one I can cheat on a lot because I'm obviously yeah. Lesser. It's not like your nature maps where you blend textures and stuff. Yeah, no, I'm covering up the main texture that I'm using with an ass load of cherry blossom trees. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like, it looks a little cluttered. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unclip, basically, darken areas here, 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 from a certain percentage out, brighten areas here, 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 um, and then, uh, like, cut out a lot of this area, but you gotta put it in a map tool so you have shit to actually cut out. There's a hard edge that I fucking hate. Get out of here. So yeah, if you've ever wondered what map tool is like versus Roll20, uh, it's very nice. Yeah, you got layers on the right side. Oh, you got all the layers properly There's spaced so out. Layers. You can make circles. You can make circles? Unheard of. You can blend textures? Yeah. My god. I'm, I'm calling this map Normal Town because it's a very normal town. Uh, that will be featured in Hit Show Reflection. We're gonna, we're gonna start with some, like, general shapes just to figure out what the fuck goes where. Maybe a little bit. Oh boy, she's, she likes this map. She really, she really likes this map. <laughs> <laughs> Big thing the map tool has going for it is the drawing tool has like measurements on it, which yeah. is uh, sick as fuck. So you can tell how far shit is away from other shit. I guess like chat, uh, since we're on the uh, map tool time, if you have questions about map making, that would oh, be yeah, time there's to any if there's any comments, pass it along. When I get in the map making zone, I, I get in the zone. Do you have to have an instance where you want to draw Claire's yeah. attention to something, but like optionally, like a secret or uh, uh, a thing that, that they could hypothetically discover, but isn't essential, like a neat uh, uh, Adventure game rules, don't, don't hide it. Put no drop shadow on it. It's rule number one. <laughs> drop uh, shadow. Drop shadow is literally the this is out of play rule. If there's drop shadow on it and it's a thing, you've committed a great sin. You would need to make uh, it look interactable. Make it look like an old animation cell where you're like, you can tell where the boulder. You could be like, oh, that boulder's gonna move when Roadrunner goes underneath it. Uh, make it make it like that. Follow those rules. Inky asks, yeah. how do you make her roads and shit look more natural? Oh, uh, agonizing. <laughs> y'all are, y'all are gonna watch because I'm making road here. <laughs> so the big one is, um, dirt and grime and stuff. Make it, make it look good. So you need a, you need to get in there and you need a, you need a grime time. So like, find a good dirt, find a good dirt that you like save it everywhere and then apply it so like i i really like this dirt texture right here it's really tiley if you like obviously hit everything with it if you bury riddle in 90 tons of dirt uh everyone will notice <laughs> but if you do something like this which is something i do extremely frequently there is a hard edge between these two surfaces 
which gives the impression, say it's like, yeah. there's a hard edge between basically this rock texture that's supposed to be like the, the curb and the road itself beneath. And you can see there's like, like half bricks down there. Uh, it gives the impression that it's on a higher plane. If you want that, that's good, but it looks a little too clean. So you gotta, you gotta go in and you gotta, I usually reserve this for areas where the player's vision is, like they're gonna be coming up the main, the main path here. So don't go all the way over here and start doing it because it's a waste of time. Uh, start doing it over here. You just start to do motions that are like, set opacity really low. It's really good for this. One to two together. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You can imply that something is a crack by going like, eh. Eh. And yes, I do this on every map. <laughs> Inky goes, oh wow, map tool kinds of schmeeded, yeah. This <laughs> map tool's pretty fucking schmeeded. Blue uh, Aurus uh, asks, where do you get your textures? Um, Roll20 Marketplace. There's a lot of good ones. Um. But yeah, see how the, if we now zoom out to a normal scale, the texture blending makes the road no longer look bad. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep hitting it like this until it looks good. Let's keep doing maps for a bit then. Yeah, yeah. You get the, you get the real ass <laughs> hair pulling experience, experience yeah. Mm -hmm. Of how long this shit takes me. Good. People need to see, yeah. people need to yeah. realize yeah. <laughs> the amount of work. The second we make it to the grass, though, we can actually go a little more heavily on the texture. I was working at 5% opacity. Now I can bump it to 15, and I can make a lot more progress a lot more quickly, because I'm going to start laying the path for a little garden. And just figuring out your shapes is very important at first, because, you know, you don't want to lose track of the map. Normally, I am as paint out a shape of what the map is going to be, but I don't want to do that, because that requires another, me opening another window, and uh, so I'm freestyling it a little bit so obviously it looks like ass it won't eventually though uh inky says that uh their bronze age sentiment campaign is going to have many forest maps they're excited slash scared do you have any like advice maybe forest maps are the easiest they are the like easiest the they're... Yeah, yeah they're really easy you can cover any problem with a tree with a tree or a bush <laughs> <laughs> big fat tree on it you got an issue Life something wisdom. looks bad put a fucking tree on it yeah uh gar gardens are easy too you just put a fucking flower on top of the thing, easy. Easy. The other thing about uh, the way we make maps is we typically, it is, at one point, when we were working on reflection maps, which is why you'll notice reflection maps look really fucking different from all of our other maps, I went, Jay, if you teach me how to use map tool to make maps, I'll teach you how to use Clip Studio Paint to make maps. Yeah, and then uh, my, yeah. my chakra is unlocked. And we, we traded secrets and our maps are now Insane. <laughs> yeah. Something that I'm doing that just adds any amount of color to this, that when you go into... The colors are really strong in this because uh, CSP has wonderful gradient maps that will pick up differences in color in very fun ways and actually, like, average them out. So I tend to make the maps kind of colorful in the base and a little discordant so that the gradient maps, like, look good and pick up right. Uh, but if you have, like this, three different colored versions of the same texture and you use them all together you can create really cool effects is another yeah. is another hot tip is like make like here's here's version one <laughs> here's version two and here's version three and if you overlay them all together they create a natural like almost like gradient and uh it looks good it looks good mm -hmm. on the brain yeah and then when you go into Clip Studio Paint, you can use gradient maps to sort of hit them with a beam, and it looks really good. Yeah. It looks really good. <laughs> the big thing that ruins a map for for everyone everywhere, uniformity. If people see the areas where it is just, like, obviously tiled, it, this is true of both video games, map tool maps, everything. If you see the area where everything is tiled and something repeats itself, it takes you out of the experience. I'm drawing in the fucking token layer. <laughs> I had that in mind when I was making like textures for maps and stuff. Yeah. But then I just screwed myself over because I'm like, okay, I'm making like a, st a stone floor, but I don't want it to be obviously uniform. So if yeah. I make it so nothing lines up, <laughs> it doesn't pile nicely. You're, and it ends like 63 correct. pixels longer than it than the actual <laughs> grid. 
then people won't notice. And it turned out to, just to make it horrible. <laughs> to it would make it hard as hell for you, but you're <laughs> technically correct. Uh, Someone is asking, uh, what is the hardest kind of map? Uh, spaceships. For me, <laughs> it is uh, a lived-in area. Yeah. For me, it's big, like, mansions. Like, mansions or castles. Mm. Like, I just shot the Camellia Manor that took yeah. me and Jay and Mask collectively working on it for, like, two weeks. And it's still not done. <laughs> yeah. I think warehouses, my hair out. bro. Like, warehouses? Man, I couldn't make any <laughs> <laughs> Legit, it's, it's any lived-in space that requires a lot of personalized items. Because the thing that stops me dead in a map is not having an asset for it. The worst yeah. thing that you've got isn't like, here's a very complex geometry you gotta make. I can make complex geometry if I've got everything on hand. The worst thing is literally having to stop all momentum to realize I don't have an ironing board. Yeah, it's like, motherfucker, okay. The maps I hate the most, spaceships and kitchens. Yeah, yeah like, kitchens are a bitch. I hate bathrooms and will not make them. I love bathrooms <laughs> because I, I'm a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, BHB Muth asks, what kind of asset do you wish you had when you started? Good pavement, good dirt, good grass are like, they carry 90% of the weight, I'm gonna be real. Good element effects, like smoke, fire, all that mm, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Novelty pillows, I think, is where it is for me. <laughs> because I, I, when I first started, I did a lot of interior, like decorating a lot of interiors, like kids' yeah. house and stuff like that. And it's like, y having like, because it's like Roll20 has like, five pillow assets and everyone uses them. Having like nice like, oh, and this is like a stuffed animal or like something like that. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a good, I've got a good teaching lesson for uh, this, this shit. So uh, right now I'm painting winter. The mud texture has a very specific shape to it. If you look at it, if you look at this, 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 this little wormy thing that I'm drawing around, this is the <laughs> shape of the texture. Uh, you can make everything look really, really, really good if you start to paint in big circles like this, and then you find where the wormy guy is, and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna complete the wormy guy. I'm just gonna yeah. draw it until the wormy guy completes, and every time I miss, I'm creating an accidental op uh, opaque um, yeah. gradient that lets it slope away into nothingness, and it makes it makes things like, if you're using a shape like these, these bricks over here, yeah. look really good. Or like with this, the, 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 the mud, the horny uh, guys. So this this brick asset that I've thrown down is actually going to be the background for a road. These bricks aren't the road itself. The road will be like this. And like, basically what you do is you put a road through and with bricks behind it, and then you take, say, this dirt right here, and you paint the dirt underneath this on the object layers. Well, I'm having a lot of fun with this, actually. I yeah. love explaining my process. Yeah. Like a Bob Ross map stream, let's go. So yeah. you take you take dirt like this and you you draw it underneath. And that makes it look like, oh shit, this, this part of the road was real fucked up. And then you swap up a layer because this, this is on the background layer, which means if you paint on the object layer, it's on a higher priority, which lets you do little things like it, it stands out not quite as much. You cut the edges off of it, and you make the dirt actually come up and over the pieces of road. So it gives the impression of a large pothole. And then, in order to take this even to the next level, you can go click just black coloration, set it to five, and then draw a bunch of fucking circles. Yeah. And boom, you got yourself a big fucking pothole there. It's easy. Yeah. Map making's fun, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, said, huh, I'm suddenly regretting my campaign that takes place in a, a shopping mall. So like interiors, depending on who you are, yeah, they're either hard elevator. or like really easy. Uh, what I find that works is uh, one thing you need to realize when making maps is it's going to look at. Uh, yeah. The reason being is these maps exist to have people in them. And obviously, a, a mall without people is going to look empty. A room without people is going to look empty because these spaces exist to have people inside of them. Liminal right? spaces, baby. Yeah. So, also not going over detail uh, is a big thing. Where when you make a room, pretty much just go over detail, probably on like one spot. 
to capture the eye and then go less detailed from that point for falling downwards. Inky <laughs> has been trying to ask this for a bit. Oh. So, uh, uh, essentially, it's uh, even though we sort of got into it, I think the the need is for more detail. Uh, what do you use Clip Studio for in the map making uh, process? So lighting, yeah, uh, is the big one. Uh, so okay, basically, when we're talking color palettes, there is a reason that most Roll Twenty campaigns all look the same is because they're all drawn from the same pool of assets, yeah. and they all follow a very similar color palette, which is none. It's all over the place. It means it means all the colors are going to be literally whatever assets you grab and grab them through together. Clip Studio Paint is important because you use overlays, gradient maps, etc., yeah. to give it a uniform color. Yeah. To make it not. Adding, yeah. Yeah, adding like a little bit of noise and fuzz can really c connect the assets where they weren't yeah, connected yeah. beforehand. And yeah, also exactly. Clip Studio, uh, you can do lighting, which is something you can't really. You can draw lights. Like a good example is the. Uh, the red light district uh, yeah. in reflection, where it's like all those neon lights, those aren't assets. J, well, like the, those neon that. lights are assets, but their glow isn't. Those are yeah. things that Yeah, Aloha made the map, in. I drew yeah. it in, yeah. yeah. And there's also like on the, um, on the Coda Lair 2, there's all those buildings that they, they look cohesive, and then mm -hmm. they have like the colorful border around the edge. Yeah. You that's can do the, the, that's CSP, the colorful border and the cohesion of color. Yeah. It's also good for like, um, Clip Studio Paint has an asset store and there are some things in there that are really good for this kind of stuff of like, oh yeah, here's just a pin that draws string lights or here's oh, just a pin so that, yeah, draws, yeah. that draws a brick wall, you know? I, I literally made a pin that draws a strings of lanterns and a pin that draws, um, just a a wooden wall so that we could just draw walls instead of having to place them yeah. one asset at a time. Oh, yeah. uh, also, uh, I guess just a thing. What you see now with Jay is somebody who has very, very used to the program and the oh, process. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Do not feel bad for being oh, slow. <laughs> yeah, don't. Uh, no, I literally have specced all of my points into speed over the years. Like, yeah. I could make way prettier maps if I took my time. I do fuck that shit, I go fast. Yeah. Uh, for example, Jay taught me all of his secrets. Uh, Jay can make five maps in the time it takes me to make like one. The other thing that's really cool about Clip, uh, using these in Clip is, uh, map tool is literally unparalleled for making like paths, like drawing like th the stuff that Jay's doing right now and just like putting down like paths, doing texturing, cause you can blend textures, which they're like, I don't know of another program that lets you do that. Um, Legit. In Clip, I what I like to do is I like to make the base in Map Tool. Uh, this is where me and Jay differ. And then I put all the assets down in Clip, where I'll just make a folder in Clip, and then I'll just put all the assets in it, so that it, I can have infinite asset layers. <laughs> because that's the other thing that's nice about Clip is all these programs are like, yeah, here are your three layers, and I'm like, yeah, that's great gets rid of it and just goes into clip where I have infinite layers. And what's really cool is then if I go, oh, I placed a lot of trees on this map, but they're all green and I need the trees to be like pink, then I can combine all the trees onto one layer and then put a gradient map on them and make them pink. My biggest advice for like everything, but like also map making is consistency of quality is probably the best thing, right? Yeah. Where mm, makes sense. quality will come over time, right? Just it's with why, experience. It's why Jay's the shining example of this, just because, like, you look at TI and how TI has been going on for God knows millions of years, right? And it's this <laughs> kind of thing where it's just, like, uh, do consistently growing and taking a step forward every time you do something instead of trying to sprint your way forward, right? I'm going to immediately deflect this compliment onto Jackson yeah. because I feel like he's more of the engine than I am. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, both of you. You guys, <laughs> you guys are... Laugh. You guys are you guys are TI together as in like a Voltron that combines together, but it's just like yeah. We put, we put the tin the fact that I have got nothing. <laughs> the fact oh, so really quick, just to interrupt. Uh, hot technique I just did. One layer of water on top of the uh, object layer. One layer of water on top of the um, uh, what you call it? Uh, background layer lets you do shit like this, where you can put rocks underwater, and then you can take the erase tool and really, really carefully yeah. contour in on a pixel by pixel basis yeah. and have oh. and have <laughs> the rock breach the water. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, Another just, piece of sick. advice I'd give people, especially if you're like artist aligned, is um 
picking out a color scheme you want for a map. If your map, if you're like, oh, I want my maps to feel cohesive. And I want to do. I want to cheat and do it fast, where I don't have to have a lot of experience, or I don't have to have a lot of. One thing that you can do, especially if you're using Clip for gradient maps, is you can go. I'm going to make this map have a color palette of like, oh, it's going to be like autumn colored, you know. Yeah. And just having a color palette will help a lot, but uh, it does take a little bit of effort with gradient mapping yeah. and stuff like. In Indigo, uh, you noticed when we did started doing all of the uh, One Wish Left stuff, all of the Chapter Three stuff, all of the trees in Indigo uh, got automified. That was me. That was yeah. me going in and hand manually and automifying picking, them and yeah. manually picking and automifying them with gradient maps. The hell but on Earth. It, also, one thing I, you can consider is just like the direction the map that your characters are walking, right? If you're having characters going from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, whatever's at the top of the screen will feel more important, right? Yep. It's like small shit like that that's like, you know... Yeah, no, you, uh, apply game design level design logic to, yeah. to your maps. It's What's nice is you don't need to know a lot of the a lot of the trickier stuff. You can apply very simple stuff. If you need somebody to pay attention to something, put a fat light over it. If you need, um... If you need, yeah. uh, what you call it, someone to ignore something or you want them to look away from an area, put it in darkness. For this map, every, it, the big riddle is going to be walking from the bottom of the map to the top. And it, as you can see, I have uh, immediately not followed my own advice and gone off to the lower right hand corner and just started going fucking nuts. But um, <laughs> that's fine. You know, we're all, uh, talking about. Uh is a uh, is a uh, previous works but like uh, let's let's get a little bit too detailed somebody asks uh what time saving method slash sheet are you most proud of oh uh, i can don't make the map i can jump on that after that <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you go first you go first <laughs> gradient maps <laughs> uh save um so what i did right here this is me hand drawing brand new textures for this for this area um you can really quickly make a cube like this and just apply a bunch of different textures on it. And if you need to make five segments of woodland, for example, you make a cube like this, apply a bunch of different textures, chop the cube up and throw trees on it in random intervals. That's not just one map, you've made five maps. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jay's a genius. So when it comes to the abandoned district and reflections, Jay said, cool, I'm going to effectively make a bunch of streets and he just made a big block of streets yeah. and he put random like buildings on it. And he said, cool, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna use this and I'm just gonna save this base thing and then I'll throw some random stuff on it and then cut it up in different directions and flip it around in different ways. And that's like 70 abandoned maps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this map took me about yeah. five minutes, 10 minutes. Like yeah, yeah. If, if you know how to do a good template, yeah. you can make a map really fast and then you get um yeah, yeah you get like here's the finished version here we go yeah like you can make this in 10 minutes with a good template make yourself one good woods template you just make a cube you put dirt on the cube you put other types of grass on the cube right save it as background template then copy it five times and then throw trees on it in random areas, rocks on it in random areas, yeah. five maps instantly. One trick I, I did when I was really early in the make, map making, I actually did this for Queen's Watch for most of the time, is that I would find maps that generally be the vibe I'm looking for. Like, oh, I, I saw this, this top-down view of a map from an RPG maker game. All right, grab that. Put that on the GM layer and recreate it with Roll20 assets. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, very yeah. smart. I, yeah. I literally knew how I mapped like, me. For yeah. like literally going in oh. and going into a map of like a video game, like an map? overview map of a video game and just redoing it that video way. Uh, video games. I'm, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm putting the stream up in a sec. I, yeah. I uploaded that gigantic ass map and it's oh, like, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. die. If you make a map, you could just take a smaller portion of that map yeah. And then you just you just cut it out, and then that's like for a tiny scene, you just redecorate it a little bit, easy. I've used the beach I did for the beach up for CI for like four years in every oh, yeah. game I've done, basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I, just, I just change the location. I just like, if you mirror a map, 
chances are most people won't remember it if it's been like a couple of sessions. Like, you yeah. can really get away with that. What do you mean, Dad Hala and the Beach episode had the same ad? This is bullshit. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean, I reused episode 13th God? I reused yeah. that same beach from when I ran a CI session. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. The thing that I've learned literally over last year uh, is uh, a thing that can help you gain a bunch of time is sort of organizing yourself within your own mindset yeah. of essentially Yo, me. what like what do you want from this you yeah. know like it, it's like the big difference between uh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take talk about stuff that i know <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. so the big difference between a chase scene or a high dc like a like mm. a stealth scene right yeah, yeah. if you want a chase scene what you need to, what you need, the only thing you really need to detail is the stuff that's going to be on the line that will, you know, that the people will be chased to and fro. You don't need to like make the entire building. You need to, you know, basically just make the path. And you can, you can do the the video game shit of like, oh, that shit's locked and whatever. It doesn't matter because in a in a scene where everybody is yeah. like panicking because you literally have a chaser monster on their ass. Uh, they're not gonna pay attention too much out of that, and yep. in the in the worst aspect of it, it's funny. So like you're fine. Like people are not gonna get yeah. on your ass because you did a, a video game trope. And so like the the opposite of that, for example, is uh, like uh, for example, you know, like you had the, the the version of what everybody's been saying so far, like they were scenes, right? Like people, they were basically making set pieces. No. Uh, you don't necessarily need, like it depends on what you're doing with your campaign and stuff. If it's very character driven and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and not necessarily a sandbox, you know, you, you basically, you need your set pieces like, uh, What's the what's the thing that like a, a series like Friends for example you know mm, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like uh, like they have the apartment like and then room, they have yeah. yeah exactly so basically you can use the exact same uh, methods for your own maps of this is a set piece for my little drama that I'm making so you don't you yeah. don't need to make everything if you're stupid like me and you're making a map about like oh uh, uh, making a map and it's like oh I want them to be able to infiltrate. Uh, then you have to do everything because it's literally Deus every nook and baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because then it's literally every nook and cranny could be used. Yeah. Uh, so it yeah. depends a lot on what you want to do, and if you keep that in mind, it will actually help you save a lot of time. It's pretty incredible how much organization will save you time. Oh God, <laughs> I Jay Jay saw my asset folder. Which yeah, is just a copy of his asset folder, but uh, yeah. with everything I've collected over the years. And it's just like, it was such a mess. <laughs> such a <laughs> okay, Chad, here comes another hot tip. Um, cool. So, one of the best things that you could do to create an image of, like, a, a path that's been well-worn or used is, again, let's throw down a bunch of dirt behind it. Then, let's find a good tile. Something with a very recognizable pattern. Hey. If you ever want to make a path that, like, goes from left to right here, there's the boring way of doing it. I've created a dirt outline that will give it an impression of like, oh yeah, this will just go along here, but that's uh, boring as fuck. What you can do, however, is go in and on an area that you've indurted, you can swap this again to five opacity, and then you can start drawing your path like this. And you can make it actually mesh with the textures behind it. So you go, oh, this is like a section of path that's partially buried in the ground yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. moss has grown over yeah and if you do this this is what i'm gonna do for this entire section that i just laid out and it's gonna make it look fucking awesome well, it's like, more work but you it, know it, it's like weird but if you want to make something feel like it's under something then you draw it on top of it kind of like that transparently yep yeah. there was somebody who asked a bit ago uh how do you handle uh the uh night version or different time of day version of the map csp baby yeah. slap on that dark blue yeah. And get the fuck out of there. Yeah, uh, it's really, it's really easy. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I do something so like yeah. fucked up. I put so I I use. Did you do the cube? No, I do not use the cube. I put uh, <laughs> oh, a pack my. like I use the aura from. Oh. And I put them in like a dark part of the uh -huh. map. Yo, that's that's <laughs> actually that's actually <laughs> fucking oh, genius. Yeah, that's, that's so much smarter than the cube. <laughs> I, I use the cube and I'm a fucking moron. That's so I much love smarter. The cube. 
The cube yeah. is my favorite thing. But the downside is, if you ever delete that token or move them, yeah, like, oh, it's uh, suddenly morning now. Boom! Fuck. It's morning. Did we, Fuck. Did we tell them? Did we tell them about the cube? <laughs> oh god, we don't the talk cube? about the cube. Oh. Bro, no, no, the cube! Okay, okay the guys, cube so tech. if you ever need a night or day or a noon or something, just get a tiny fucking dark blue cube yeah. that's translucent or an orange one for like the evening and just stretch it over the entire just map. Just stretch it over the entire map. No one, no one will fucking notice. It's, yeah. it's like... <laughs> It obviously doesn't look as good as doing it in CSP, but yeah, you will you will rub forget a map eventually yeah. and be like, man, I need a I need a fucking cube. You will respect that cube. And the best you thing will ever, respect that cube. If you put it on the top of the token layer at the very top, and you just put all your tokens on the map layer at the top, yeah. then you can have it go over all the icons because your players will be able to click it, and you yes. just get to suffer a little bit for the, your art. You know, it's crazy. Someone asked, uh, "Are you doing this with tablet or mouse? Probably a mouse." Mouse. Yeah. I do it with tablet. I I have uh, for for us it's like plugging in our tablets or something like that is such an extra step to get started on map work that it's just like yeah. I have yeah. uh I have rheumatoid arthritis and everything that I have is like set up to not make my rheumatoid arthritis mad. Yeah. Uh so I've got like I I upgraded to the big mouse so I can do this a whole lot. Yeah. So I've got a big mouse for my gigantic fucking hands. Yeah, like clone said I yeah, love that's, that's, this that's is so perfect. much excellent map advice. And if anyone wants to fucking see her, they'd have to go through a desert bus spot. Fucking oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, star, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is the legacy that we want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if, if you ever want to do a top, a stopped time thing inside of your roll twenty, I do. It's a little bit of work, but what you do is you um, basically you go and you have your icons. You put them on the map layer, all of your icons and all that stuff on the map layer before you drop them down, and then on the settings in roll twenty, you make like basically maximum range you want to like give give your uh yeah. player whatever maximum range of sight and then you enable fog of war um and then after they've seen the entire map you give them whatever sight line you want them to have and you can basically move them through and all the icons will be stopped but if you put them closer to someone you can have their icons not be there they'll slowly fade away as you kind of walk near them so you can have this weird visual effect where you're basically like walking around the map and things disappear as you get close to them oh. um, and it's all kind of grayed out and you can have like a primary color thing like you just the weirdest part is you have to <laughs> you basically have to have like no no here's the part where you have to have the entire thing as an object underneath oh. all the other objects too. oh i see uh. you know oh. the <laughs> incredibly sane decision yeah yeah you just but <laughs> You just have a the, what the map is as an object, and so when you get closer, the map what you're seeing in the fog of war disappears, and the object version of the map appears instead. It's really weird. I guess I have a question for map making. Uh, considering considering the everything of every you know map making tool slash uh, software that yeah. we got, how do you handle verticality? Oh dear sweet Jesus. Um oh. I uh depends on the map. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I I've got a tech. I, Avoid. My, big, my big tech is um take a screenshot of the map. Mm. Shrink it down. Apply a blur filter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put it in the background. That's how that's how yeah. you create an impression of height and difference. Fade it out a little bit to show its background because people will process it as background if you do that. It's a lot easier to do verticality if you're not, it's like not interactable verticality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't, then you gotta like, well, uh, without doing different maps, you could have like different uh, like levels on the same yeah. map in like little corners of the map, or you can try to uh, uh, down you can download Foundry and get the levels mod, and there you go, you just learn that, and then there you go, you got verticality. So, we are going to follow our usual rules, which is you point the shadows towards the direction that you want the characters to not really interact with as much. Yeah. Basically, we've got a few core areas, there's like three, like almost think of it as like Monster Hunter zones. There's like three major zones. There's the left side of the path, the right side of the path, yeah. and the big center area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah. We're gonna tilt the stat, uh, the the shadows of this fence towards yeah. the inside here, so that everyone knows. Oh, that's that's where the dark side is, and then we're gonna cover it in a bunch of trees because we don't want people to interact with it. 
Yeah. And we're gonna use this to separate the zones. Just a PSA, uh, always make sure to back up your Roll20 games in a separate campaign after you've plugged everything in and done all that work. Oh, always, yeah. yeah. On the subject of different zones, um, I, uh, there is a single work that has influenced my entire life, and, uh, I'm a fucking hack fraud champ, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's called Fate Stay Night, and, um, yeah. you can, you can see it in <laughs> fucking everything, but, um, there is a, there is a, um, fight very early on in Two of the Roots, where, uh, Saber fights Berserker, and, um, depending on what route you're in, fighting Saber, uh, Saber's fighting Berserker over by, like, a church, and uh, depending on what route you're in, the fight goes to a different area around the church, and it yeah. changes the tone of the story entirely based on where they're going, where um, in the first route, she's just squaring up chump uh, with him in the middle of the street. In the second route, they're fighting in a graveyard, and yeah. they're narrating how Saber's using the terrain to make sure that the graveyard, like none of the attacks come in and manage to connect with her in the graveyard, etc. Um, One of the big reasons, one of the big reasons between just just me and you, chat, is uh, uh -huh. that sentiment has so much knockback on it. Oh, characters can slap each other between zones of play. Yeah. You saw it with Willow smacking the Hunter of Mortals in the last episode into the Valley of the End area and functionally entering her own small battle out there. That every map is tactically designed that way so that there are breakaway walls like it's fucking Tekken. Like, it's. They're all built that way so that you can dramatically change venue without having to do the Goku and Vegeta let's go somewhere if it's deserted. Yeah, <laughs> like, you have to yeah. transfer <laughs> like, transport yeah. maps and shit. And, yeah. hey my friends, hey, there are three zones here with just enough space between each of them to get knocked the fuck between <laughs> yeah, stages in this triangle. <laughs> so chat, since this area is going to be a little less defined, what I'm doing is drawing a mud layer and then I'm going to go around the outside and draw bricks on top of it. One by one, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna see you're gonna see you're gonna see you're gonna see the hell I regularly subject myself to. Okay, so now that we've drawn the outside, we can leave it here, right? We can we can absolutely leave it here. No, we can absolutely leave it here. But we aren't. We're pushing yeah. it to the next level. So, Chad, you'll observe that I took I took the edge of the scenery and I fucking pushed it. So now it's not just dirt. Now it's like this cool extra pattern. And if I was extra dedicated to this, I'd go back and I'd add another layer of dirt. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> but when I make yeah. it to the other side, uh, and uh, yeah, this is this is how we live our life. This is how you make a map look good. Look at how far we've come, up. and it's only taken us like an hour. So uh, you'll also notice that I have basically put down no objects so far. That's because. 95% of the work I do on the map is in the textures. That's a, that's a little bit of a secret for me to you. Objects are good for taking up space, but painting a pretty picture behind them, that's that's the that's the that's where the, the real redillions are are. Next! I One know. last layer of dirt! Okay, so now we're that gonna go makes me feel good. We're gonna uh. go through and we're gonna trim off all of the all of the awkward edges I made using dirt so to take away the like almost like painterly quality which like for your game it might be the vibe it isn't for reflection so we're gonna we don't need to go nuts because not a lot of people are gonna pay attention to this shit but we have to cut it back enough to not pop now look compare the two sides one to the other our extra dirt detailing went a long way damn <clears throat> And now we do it on this side. And we're done with that segment. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fun and tedious that was. I'm trying to think, is there anything else we need to do before we start slapping down objects? And the short answer is, uh, we should start doing it. So uh, this map finishes at some point in the next five years. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the road and work our way up. And basically adding objects is fun because it covers up how empty the map is. It's like, this is the fun stage because everything starts to come together and you, you get to feel like a big brain fucking genius because you've been putting in all of the work up to this point and it all looks like ass and you're like, that, that looks terrible. Who the fuck would ever love this? Uh, get ready. 
to discover who would love this. You, it's because you. it's going to be amazing, yeah. It's you, because it's going to be incredible. So we're going to throw down a bunch of random asphalt assets and just pile them up in this area. Basically, just throw them all down. Literally, literally random is perfect, because, um... Things in your end in life tend to be actually a little more random than organic, like, than intentionally designed. And I wish, honestly, that there was a randomized function for, like, tree, tree and plant placement. God, yeah. Because it helps a lot. So you turn your brain off and you just, you just throw. You make, you use the little side palette and you just go fucking ape shit. Try to apply basic reasoning, like... If you see a yellow line connected to another yellow line, but otherwise just fucking go wild. Once you've done this, you've got the outline of a road. We're gonna go through and add a few layers of dirt backdrop. You don't need to go as insane as I did up above because nobody's gonna be paying attention to the dirt. They're gonna be looking at the road. Okay, so our road, when we zoom it into 100% and we take our riddle of significant size and we we copy her and make a make her a normal sized riddle that is a that is a fence that is a fence not riddle i see <clears throat> we can see that the road there's like little bits of scene dressing that we can do like uh this road pack wonderful it comes with a lot of like not only roads, yeah. but little road signs and stuff. Yeah, just, you can, it, it's like one of the city packs you can find on like the Rule 20 Marketplace. It's like... It's really good. It's yeah, really fucking good. So These traffic cones are so fucking... Why, Riddle, this traffic cone's bigger than you are. It's so large. Hey. Oh, I guess this probably is so obvious, but just in case uh, someone doesn't know about it if you're not doing uh your campaign for a stream and it's just like a home game there's a shit ton of patreons out there of people who oh, literally oh, yeah. make maps just make maps just it's draw beautiful. them yeah. Yeah. yeah and like it's it's beautiful it's very well made and they actually have uh, uh for a surprising amount of them uh free sections yeah. even though it's patreon and you can actually get stuff yeah. from there as yeah. long as it's not you know as long as you're not using it for projects that's gonna be on stream or making yeah. money uh, or anything like that. There's actually a lot of them that even let you use stuff for streams too, so just check yeah. the Oh yeah, oh, damn. Check, the, check the terms of use. Looks like 10 minutes yeah. tabletop, yeah, the old yeah. dice. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I remember a question from before who was related to the process of like prepping, but is not map making immediately, so I overlooked it. Uh, someone was asking about music. What's the process of everyone to get their sort of soundtrack for their games? Uh, right. So, uh, okay, well, um, if you have a, if you're, <laughs> I think the biggest thing is like, just think about what like inspirations you have for your game and stuff like that, and then go look at their music. Um, and then probably that's probably gonna be the easiest way to get like music for stuff. Find a composer um, you like. Yeah, uh, and, uh, in you have big bucks, so you can commission music. Yeah. 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 But for simple stuff, just use music if you like, honestly. Um, if you're going to start making the journey to not using that, uh, I mean, Dova Syndrome. <laughs> Go look up Dova <laughs> Syndrome, I guess. Uh, Kevin <laughs> McLeod, actually. Uh, you will probably know that one. But, yeah. uh, but that one's actually like, he's, he's released a lot of music nowadays. It's very different than his original stuff, but I think that was a lot of, like, you can find a lot of really good copyrights. Actually, even the YouTube audio library has a lot of really good music to grab too, depending on what you're looking for. Like really, you're just gonna find different types of music, musical styles in different places and stuff. Like, Damn it, you're yeah. so funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you have to look at that direction, but generally, just, just want to, you know, just use music that's like related to what you're you're doing, like the, your favorite. Oh, your JRPG vibes. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna look up my favorite JRPG games and then do that. And mobile, games. mobile games. That way. Mobile games. Yeah. yeah. I get 99% of my music from JRPGs. Yeah. yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> yeah, no same. Video game music is good, and Twitch doesn't strike you for it because it's video. Game. Well, that's yeah. if you're doing it for a show like us. Uh, I, elsewhere, you could you could fucking do whatever you want. You could fucking Metallica. Yeah. You can fucking I, I don't know, man. Who is Metallica on a um, stream? That's that's insane. Also, the copyright um, holders would destroy you, right? Uh, don't even bother uh, trying to get any sort of rights to stream anything. By the way, 
because they'll strike you anyways and demonetize you. And then when you God, try they'll to, strike um, the shit out of you, when yeah. you try to like send them evidence that you do have legal rights to own a song, they'll just ignore you. So it will uh, ignore the living yeah. shit out of you. So whereas uh, on the other hand, uh, video games and stuff on Twitch are a little safer because video game soundtracks are expected to be played. So yeah. really, it's easier and and more encouraged to steal than it is to get things legal. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Christian is not first. speaking from a bitter place at all. <laughs> yeah. Video game music very safe because the video games are played on Twitch. Yeah. So you know that I mean, I guess yeah, if yeah. you're not on Twitch, just any music is fine. When it comes to when it comes to getting music, make sure the people that you're taking from are a large company or studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if, if we're committing theft, which we are not recommending. In Minecraft. <laughs> in Minecraft. In Minecraft. If, uh, don't um. I've seen Miko mo online. She's so what, yeah, don't 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 take from indie games. Obviously, that you like should just directly support, <laughs> etc. That's this way. Yeah. Of We're making a we're making a little graveyard because I was talking about Fate Stay Night earlier, and I'm like, this could be a cool fight location. So Chad, obviously, what I'm doing now is using a darker grass to put behind the other grass to give the impression that the graveyard is like overgrown, leaving only the areas in front of the graves. Un, un, un grassy. And then along the bottom, let's just go like this. Throw down some random foliage. And then just hit it with more random foliage. Once you've got assets out on the map, it gets significantly easier to just grab, copy, paste, and just cheat. Just save yourself time. As much as physically fucking possible. Now, <laughs> if we zoom out, look at how fucking complete this map's starting to look, everyone. <laughs> Look at how good this is starting to look. And uh, I have a I I live there. Here's a here's a <laughs> here's a trick. Here's a cool trick. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a preview about how fucking good this is gonna look in the future. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you tree down. the power of trees, my friends. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about. Like I was like, oh man, you should put some trees there, and you did. I'm like, oh I guess that's the. Look at this. Look at how it covers up any quiet area with just a big fat fucking. Obscuring, beautiful thing. Look at how, look at how fucking good this looks. Look at how great this is. Look at how much fun we're having. Okay, so yeah. now, the left side of the map that Big Riddle has been observing is completed, and I can simply move her over here. And we'll begin on this segment of the map, and then throwing down an ass load of trees in in this area, right here, just so we don't gotta deal with shit. Almost done with the little park area. I'm gonna put a single grave over here. Don't want to make little end panels for your fence? Just put a fucking tree over it. Now that's somebody else's problem. Does that look like an annoying thing to do? Put a fucking tree on it. You know, the world would be a better place if more people did that. Yeah. We'll turn it so it looks different. <laughs> no one will ever notice chat don't work on me. Now it's time to make a path within the path. Okay, chat, we're in the final phases. Let's get going. The map is very nearly done. Hey, I've got a question for all you accomplished GMs. I'm probably going to be running like a small thing for my IRL D&D group, but I don't have much experience GMing. And a couple of the people have said that they are not comfortable role-playing. Like, they've said those words, but they've had fun in the times, there have been yeah. times where they've managed to get into it. So I'm thinking, like, you do like the role playing. You just haven't had the right opportunity. How does the wall? How do you encourage people to uh, give them mechanical bonuses for role playing? Yeah, like if you like, kind not of like a thing of oh, if you can have your character explain to this character I, why they're doing this, not, they get not, advantage or something. Not exactly like that, but like, cause like then it's just like it feels like you're forcing them. More like what I would do is if they do happen to role play give them a bonus and be like, yeah, and because you did this, I'm going to give you a bonus and kind of Pavlov bell them and be like, you role played bonus. There you go. Right. And just be like, oh man, I did something good. I role played and I got a reward for it. And so they keep doing it. I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily like sit them down and be like, if you role play, I'll give you a bonus for this. And then them be like, um, uh, uh, cause that can put people on the spot and uh yeah. feel really bad but if you just like if they happen to do it and then rewarding them for it uh it, it might just like because you can't really like 
push them off the edge into that kind of direction, you kind of have to ease them in. And if they happen to do it and then rewarding them in that kind of sense, it will, like, you know, be a lot better, I think. The biggest, the biggest thing that you can um, do is ask why. Uh, ask why their character would do a certain thing, or yeah. ask why they why they did a, a certain action. Uh, that's that's how you get everybody on at least thinking this way. It's it I, means they don't need to put on a voice or anything or do anything like that. But if they're like, I want to buy this weapon, you go why and how does your character feel about it? They don't I feel like we're not even at that step yet where yeah mm -hmm. it's still the part where you have to turn to this person and say uh what's your character doing or would you like yeah. to do anything like, kind yeah. of drag it out of them until they like find their comfort level yeah but i'm not sure how to because there are other people like dakota would probably be in eddie's perfectly oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> being his wacky self. The challenge is going to be like this really timid type of player. Yeah. What I, I'm super comfortable I'd say just thing. literally like, um, so for, for asking why, what you do is you go, you turn to them and you go, okay, what, do, what does your character want to do next? And this is the most important thing. This is how you are the best role player ever. And this is also how you are the worst role player ever. If you go, what does your character want to do? Uh, or like, what, what, what are you up to while this is happening? And then they give you an answer. Act excited or bemused and just be like, oh, okay, so you're doing that. Can I ask, like, what the fuck's running through your head? Oh. Like, if you turn it into a conversation that you're happy to be there for, yeah. people will open up more and more, which is, conversely, the way you shut people down in roleplay is you act like you don't want to be here. And that's, that's the way, just boom, dead, done. Uh, it's... It is, since it's a conversation, you make it a conversation that you're excited to have. So if I, if I was gonna, if I was gonna do this with them and they do the, the classic splitting up and going throughout the town, just asking like, okay, run me through your character's plan, run me through their headspace, etc. And like, if they're like, okay, uh, we're all splitting up and we're buying gear. And it's like, okay, my character doesn't have anything to buy. I'm going to the tavern and I'm like, okay, question. What are you doing at the tavern? Does your character get drunk? Do they talk to people? Do they do this or that? And you can run through the character's headspace and just yeah. bit by bit, you help them build their story because they're probably doing what I do, which is going into session one with half of an idea of what you're doing with your character and they're yeah. gonna figure it out as it goes. <laughs> and also, if you do have a player there that is comfortable with roleplay, talking to them beforehand and be like, hey man, we're gonna pull the coolest yeah. trick. We're gonna roleplay and then they're gonna wanna join in. Because it's like yeah, the exactly. kind of thing of like, uh, it's like the school dance them. where everyone's just sit, standing there, no one's dancing, but then when people start to dance, other people are more comfortable to start dancing, right? Yeah. yeah. So having at least like one player that is comfortable Damn. with role playing and being their funky self, it like leads other people into it. So. Good comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Also, to, uh, I guess to, sorry, go on. Uh, some people who aren't really into role playing or not like particularly like immersed in it might just role play themselves. That's okay too. Yeah, that's just, like some of the most funny ass fucking characters and scenarios I've been in have been in because someone just role plays themselves as every character and they should be allowed to do that. That's fine. Yeah. A lot of my most yeah. minor characters are just me with an accent. <laughs> yeah. I, the I, accent really times okay. that like the this player is really clicked is the character just has her name. Okay. <laughs> and, Honestly, and valid. Full trait, like this is group mom, and that's how she was able to. Honestly, be... sick. Fuck yeah. yeah. Get yeah, it. That's awesome. <laughs> um, the weird thing that I've noticed, um, on top of everything that was already said, uh, if beyond that someone is still kind of stuck, a weird thing that can sort of open them up to all the strategies that uh, the, everybody else mentioned is weirdly enough humor. Yeah. Uh, if you make it funny, uh, like there's a better chance that people will join in. Uh, Humor beats cringe in the rock paper scissors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if none Marty of this campaign. works, just ask them what they need to get into role playing, and if they're interested yeah. in that at all, you know, like yeah. yeah also, there's really yeah. graceful solutions that you can avoid, like the conversation with, because sometimes people just need a little shove. But if they need more than a little shove, just talk to them, you know. I think uh, it's also important to say in situations like this. Sometimes if a group is RP-focused, because not all groups are, if a group is RP-focused, it can be kind of important to be like, well, this I want this game to be heavy in RP. 
will the, if it makes you uncomfortable, do you just want to sit out of this game? Yeah, I I, I don't want to scare anyone off because I'm definitely yeah. way yeah. more RP focused than anyone else in the group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I also think like the environment that we've been playing in has not been conducive to the yeah. RP aspect, so they've yeah. gotten a little uh, turned off by it. Where it's like, is is it that you're actually against RP, or just that you've had a lot of bad RP experiences and you don't exactly. know what like, good RP yeah. is like? Yeah. You don't know what the good shit is, the good drugs. <laughs> Rock you haven't shit. smoked the good weed yet. I mean, in the reverse, uh, I know a lot of people can be very combat like aversive because they play in a lot of combats that last like five hours and are very slow, you know? Yeah. When you have really quick or fun combat. If he buy 300 in chat, I really always wanted to get better RP. Like my characters are often hard for me to nail down, just sort of wing it most of the time. That's what everybody like, does. That's what um, everyone yeah. does. <laughs> like literally, like it's this kind of thing where it's just like, yeah, I usually don't even write back. So like, hey, hey, I, 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 this is a bad thing. And it's just like, obviously not, this is not advice for everyone. I, okay. The biggest advice I can give people is don't follow everyone's advice to the fucking T like it's the Bible. Yeah, okay? yeah. Right? Oh yeah. You <laughs> synthesize it and make your own rule set and advice yeah. for yourself, right? Uh, that, no yeah. That's one thing. But uh, going on from that, what I do is I don't really have like a clear concept of character, and a lot of times I don't even write backstory before the first session. Uh, though I, I've changed that like a little bit because a lot of us have have shows to work on and we need like assets and stuff, and it's just like oh fuck, I need to like, I need to, like camera shit down, you know? It's just like, mm -hmm. and, and so. Uh, but like what I, a lot of my characters I don't have a clear idea, but I I play a lot of characters very strong ideas, right? kind of like tenants and rule sets that they follow and what they believe in so just making your characters believe in something and go they fucking love jesus so much <laughs> 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 and eventually a personality will sprout from that so it's pretty much like it's it um i i take a core concept and i'm like all right i'm putting this character around this core concept like i played in this uh wild west strahd campaign Oh, wow. Where instead of Strahd, it's like some corrupt governor, and you're stuck in there. You're, you're, oh, you're sick. Really cool. nice. That fucking I played, rules. I played yeah. like a mad scientist who was just like a little, they were just a little too quirky. And that was just their, their whole thing. It's just they love to explore the unknown. It's not that they're crazy, it's just that they like, they want to know what happens if they eat that cactus. I guess. <laughs> For, for stuff that's worked for me, try different things. Don't stress about being good at it, and push your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I. A lot of the stuff that works for me is like, I guess like, unhealthy habits. I wouldn't encourage other people to take, but that work for me. So I'm like, it's it's hard. I need a fire lit under my ass, but yeah. I also need. I need two contradictory things that I need all the time in the universe and a fire lit under my ass. Yeah. So I'm like, how do I get this? <laughs> how do I combine these completely yeah. impossible things in order to get a brain idea Definitely. together? It's, it's why shows are actually... I am a lot better in a show format than in a lot of things just because I it... I feel that, yeah. It makes me, it makes me schmoof. Like, it makes I me actually schmoof and try movement. and, you know. Uh, having something strictly scheduled and it's just like all this other stuff is really like what it... having people to disappoint helps me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The collaborative, yeah. The collaborative asset aspect helps uh, take like the load and the scrutiny off that I apply yeah. to myself way too hard. Yeah, yeah. If it's a collaborative thing like a game and I'm just one player, one character in a roster, then. I know I'm doing fine because, frankly, I trust the people that I'm playing with to tell me if I need to change something. And it is a lot easier to just have a good time because I'm not the only one contributing. Yeah, that's why, it's why, I, that's why I don't run things, because I, 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 I can't disappoint myself. I can disappoint other people, though, that's like... I, uh, I feel like I'm like not a very good person to talk about this because it was Oh, I have a hard time pinning my characters down. What I do is I go, I'm gonna make a person. And I, I, I make this person and I craft them in my head. Where it's like, do my characters all have very complex backstories? No. Sometimes my character will be, this is just a normal fucking woman. Or this is just a normal fucking guy. And they have like a very basic backstory. And then I go, but I'm going to, I'm going to 
I'm going to like empathize with this person so hard. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, yeah. you're a normal woman, and now you have to like face God. How do you feel? You know? And I just, I just, I just go. This person is terrified. Yeah. And I just get into their mind space as hard as I physically can. It's why uh, Inky was saying, oh, everyone hates politics, but I love politics. I also love politics. <laughs> I also love playing politics in games. Same politics here. Is, okay, I, I enjoy politics a majority of the time, but sometimes politics can go too long. That, no, it, it no, like a, I love politics. You, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can talk for like 20 paragraphs about a pair, okay? I can't do that. <laughs> I can. I can do that. Yeah, like I, I, I can't. I have, I have to have things sharp and to the point. And it's just like for politics, that's not. It, politics are muddy and messy and like blobby. That's yeah. the whole point of politics. Yeah. And so it's just like it, it's that's you know that stuff. Uh, another thing is uh, when I make a character for a game and stuff. Uh, it's very easy and it helps to play off the GM just listening to the lore, seeing a concept, and going, hey. Can my character just be a part of that and like basically weaving your character into that deep lore of just like yeah okay yeah like yeah, yeah. no that's the fucking my main part. <laughs> yeah it's it's literally just like what I do and it makes it easier for you it makes the GM easier to work with because at the end of the day you have to work with your GM that's like the biggest way so you feel like you know you play off each other back and back and forth give them stuff that they can work with to make uh, the story the best for you and the best for them as possible. And also, like, what Aloha said earlier of, um, make your character have, like, a strong belief in something. Yeah. You can- you doesn't actually have to be like, oh, I'm gonna make my character have a strong belief in their morals. It can just be, if you make a decision about your character, like, for example, Circuit was probably my best example of this, where I went, okay, we have to make the AI. The AI are a little weird as characters because it's like, each of them kind of has, like, a thing that they latched onto, like, Cam really likes nature or Cursor really likes this. I was like, okay, Circuit has two things that she really likes. Circuit is describes herself as the AI who hates, and she likes to decide things arbitrarily. And this helped me understand a lot about how I kind of work with characters, where it's like, I'll have a character and I'll go, okay, here, I'm going to make, I'm going to give my character some opinions on something. My character really loves X thing. Like, Cassius is a good example of, Cassius fucking loves Indigo. He loves Indigo so much and he wants to help Indigo. And you can tell it in every action he takes because that is the foundation of that character. You can just pick something. My character really, really, really loves this specific type of flower. And now my character just wants to talk about that thing. You know, you can just make a decision where Circuit would just decide sometimes. She'd go, you know, I've decided I can't, back when she was an AI and didn't have a body, I can't taste things, but I've decided that I love licorice. And she just decided this for herself because she, she's like this. And she would just do stuff like that. And then she would just triple down on it. And it made her have a lot of things to talk about. It makes it easy to it makes it easy to talk as a character if you give them like like five opinions and they're these are their steadfast opinions that they really believe in or just like oh my character doesn't want to hurt anyone wants to help people likes the place they're from that's the fun that's the foundation of Cassius's character you can take simple things like that my big character design tip is play something that you find fun yeah. yes uh, God yeah. Because uh, I, as a GM that has made 9 million NPCs, dear lord, you're gonna play every type of character under the fucking sun and you're gonna discover what you like and don't. Yeah, literally, like, yeah. Do it's... something, do something that you can imagine yourself doing when you're exhausted out of your mind. Because yeah. there will be a time in your life then you're very tired and you just want a character that you can slip yeah, into. Yeah, it's- Challenging yourself, dope as fuck. Don't do yeah. something you actively don't enjoy. Also, uh, it is very much okay to take a character that you like, that you've seen in something, and do a bad impression yeah. of them. That yeah, that works Steel. very well. Steal numbers off! Steal. No one will know. Steal, <laughs> steal, steal, so steal. it's okay to reuse a character that you've played before and liked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's Absolutely. not illegal. The role play systems are not gonna kill you. Make your character yeah. a breaker reference. No one will care. No one will <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so close, you guys. I'm so fucking close. I'm so close to being done. You... Look at look at how fucking close we are. We just gotta fill some empty space here, here, not even over there. Just just like here and here, and then yeah. then we're fucking good. 
then we could go home. Here's like the thing that. about t TTRPGs, they're an adventure. So if you start out normal at the beginning, you're not gonna come out normal at the end. Yeah, you're it doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter how normal or strange you are at the end, you're gonna be strange at the end anyway. Hot tip for anybody, don't give people shit for the characters they're playing. Yeah. Ever. It's a bad take every time. Also, I thought I'd uh, share a bit of wisdom from the theater world uh, that I actually had in told to me by a theater major. Um, you be careful about uh, uh, getting too deep into your role play or your stuff like that. I think specif specifically, especially when you like you put parts of yourself into your character and stuff like yeah. that. Be careful if you end up like getting in the situation like you're dealing with content that you experience in real life that makes you uncomfortable or doing yeah. anything like that, or even just on a very mundane level. Be careful about getting super involved in like what you're doing because if you're like trying to tie everything to like an experience you feel you're adding your own like frustrations or even happiness and stuff like that from your own life situations into your character to try to like fake an emotion or get more like genuine mm. you're gonna risk some serious burn and that's why that's why a lot of the people you see like on the news who end up doing like you know that that kind of like in-depth acting of like oh no i need to do this i need to like yeah. live my character's life also get really bad shit <laughs> yeah they're yeah. just fucking themselves up so like it's a small thing but since everything is kind of like improv theater and rp if you think about it just just make sure to always have like a little bubble of separation from your character sometimes yeah from like a pure mental health like standpoint just just keep i definitely keep run into that problem <laughs> oh yeah no i think that's a problem a lot of people run into and that's why i thought i'd bring it up because it's like a really serious thing method acting mm -hmm. that's what that's yeah. the term yeah there are yeah. places yeah. where that can acting. having that connection can be all right but it's like yeah it's kind of a dangerous thing to play around with so you have to be super yeah. sure about the people you're playing with it's in the like, situation i guess the I best way to Coach put it is Akira. like you can address <laughs> things and you can kind of use it to like dress oh i want to address this thing or maybe i'll use this kind of like an outlet to like you know figure out like oh this character i've been thinking about this i'll think this character around that just try not to like push emotions into yourself to play something better is what i mean yeah, and that's when things can get really bad. Obviously, don't you can don't feel barter like, you don't know, barter your personal experiences and waits yeah. for for okay. for like extra juice. Okay. Yeah, wait, what you yeah, because I was I look I was talking I was, ta I was warning you like that. Method acting, <laughs> yeah, <that's basically>. <laughs> yeah. me who does method acting for most of my characters and is like it gets dangerous. It's why um if people who have watched Indigo. During uh, the With the Tide episode, I left that session early because I was like, Cassius is having a really- I, Roma, am fine. Cassius is having a bad time. He's like freaking the fuck out and I need to calm down because he's tripping balls and it's bleeding into me and I gotta go sit for a minute. <laughs> and I had to go, cool, I've noticed that this is having an effect on me. I gotta go sit down. <laughs> and it's like, stuff like that can happen and you can always ask like, hey, can I like, go sit over here for a little bit? Can I, like, take a break? Can you we, like, calm down? You could always hit the bricks. Yeah. Get the hit fuck out. Yeah. Fiction matters. And I say this as someone who, like, doesn't engage with certain media because I attach too quickly to any character, regardless of genre, so I get sad when they die. So I can't engage with st stuff that's, that's, like, really good, but it has, like, character death as part of its narrative arc because... That just upsets me. It doesn't work for me. So, yeah, stuff matters, and it can matter to you, and it can matter to others, and that's fucking important. But real people are more important, and if there's something that is causing that balance to shift, then it's worth doing what you need to take care of yourself and the people around you. Because at the end of the day, this is... It's... it's a game, it can be an expression, which a kind of art, and you can put your heart into art. But, you know, that, so Spice. of course it's gonna matter. Yeah, so nice. yeah, don't be afraid to let it matter to you, but also, like, do what you need to maintain healthy boundaries for yourself and the people around you. Also, if you're playing with a group of people, and you are experiencing bleed, and you don't feel like you can tell them, hey, I need to take a break, maybe don't play with those maybe. people anymore. Maybe <laughs> the people! Okay, you've experienced the realistic uh, reaction to map making, which is it's excellent for the first five hours, and then your brain catches on fire. 
<laughs> yep. Just like, fuck it, man. Just throw green on top of it. It'll break up the vision a little bit. Yes. Remember to take okay. breaks, kids. Oh, don't be like me. I'm, I'm actually being a very bad example, but I'm a ba very bad example with the fucking completed map. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, we go like this. We hit the screenshot button, and then I fucking take it into another program, and I apply the lighting effects.